Hey everybody, it's Laura again. Good to see you. Um, today we are going to do part two of digestion. And um, yeah, so the boys had given me some information and some feedback commentary about the videos and stuff. And um, I don't know. I'm, you know what? Maybe I just wanted them to talk to me. I don't know. They don't really talk to me very much. So um, yeah, hence why I do these videos. Look. Hmm. But, yeah, they don't shower for days on end sometimes, so why am I taking advice from them? I'm not sure. So, uh, so today we are going to be talking about digestion. And the thing that I love about digestion is that I think once you understand digestion, you get it. You understand how the body works, what claims that different people make about diets would be totally, you know, incorrect or impossible or why. Um, but the, this is the information, hopefully, that you gather from here and from me and from this explanation to better navigate your own diet or maybe a diet that somebody suggests for you. So, uh, so we're going to get right into it. So we're going to talk about starches and starch digestion. Um, think about, I think the best, the best uh, example would be um, a sandwich with lettuce and tomato, mayonnaise, turkey, okay, whole grain, whole grain, okay, so you bite into that sandwich. Right off the bat, there are enzymes in the saliva that we have in our mouths, and that will start to break down some of that, um, those long chains of, long chains of starches. So it'll start to break them down into smaller pieces. Look at, I know. Thank you, James and Sarah and Allison. Um, so it will break them down into smaller chains. After that, food is then transported into the stomach. From that point on, carbohydrates are not, there's nothing done to carbohydrates at that point, other than mechanical digestion, which is the churning and the movement of, of food along the GI tract. But other than that, nothing is happening to carbohydrates or fats in the stomach. But what is being affected is protein. So we have hydrochloric acid, and we also have um, uh, protease, which is a, it's an enzyme that helps to break down proteins. So it will, again, take long chains of proteins and start to break them down into smaller pieces. Again, because we're looking for the smallest possible molecule to be able to pass through the cell wall so that the body can start to use carbohydrates, fats, and proteins as energy. So, by the time this fluid mass makes its way to the small intestine, this is, where, this is where everything starts happening. So, right off the rip, the first 12 inches, I don't know, 12 inches, wow. Um, but the first 12 inches of the small intestine is where you have the secretion of enzymes to start breaking down carbohydrates into their smallest form. So, it does not matter. If you started at your, you know, the, the meal that you're eating with rice, soda, candy, a spoon of sugar, honey, um, a piece of fruit, all of that, no matter what, gets broken down into one of three sugar molecules. So you start off with this big long chain and the end result, the only thing that can get past the cell wall is glucose, galactose, and fructose. So everything gets broken down. So when people are making comments about, you know, sugar being bad for you and things like that, your body isn't saying, oh, look at that's sugar. Oh, oh, look at this is a piece of toast. It's, it is looking at it as, oh, look, I need to break down everything into one of these three units. That is it. The same is true for proteins. Um, so, so that happened. The first 12 inches of the intestine is where um, carbohydrate digestion and absorption happens. Next, proteins start to get broken down, and we again we have enzymes that are secreted, start to break down proteins when they are in the intestine. So the meat from that sandwich that we had earlier, that is going to get broken down. The simplest form again for this for the cells to take in for protein. Are amino acids so that is 
that is the end end game right there is you have these large chains of proteins that are all interconnected they get broken down and then they become an amino acid that can get taken into the system um, the last thing is fats same exact thing you have different fats that you are consuming and they're in large molecules need to get broken down into the smallest molecule pancreatic enzymes are released as well as bile which helps to break down fats into their smallest form and then you have either glycerol or fatty acids that is the simplest molecule that can get across the cell membrane so that is it you know everything gets broken down but it's only going to be broken down into one of those specific groups for proteins carbohydrates and fats anything that is undigested so you have like cellulose uh, you have fiber you have um, oh I it's far, um, oh my god uh, unsoluble fibers things like that I look at to totally botch that but um, but all of those fibers and those things that aren't digested, nuts, seeds, the skins on different fruits and vegetables, gets passed into the large intestine. And in the large intestine is where it's like a big food dehydrator, a really gross food dehydrator, but it's a food dehydrator. And it actually helps to, um, and not helps, but it reabsorbs water into the system. So then it dries out all that fecal matter, makes its way to the rectum, and then it is evacuated and I've got so many like poop jokes that I could go into but I won't because honestly really who doesn't have that humor okay so I do um, all right I'll leave you with that um, so yeah so you know let me know if you like this stuff please keep me informed um, write questions down below if you have questions because I know I've got a bunch of them that I'm going to address from different people and please subscribe if you like it and that's the last time I'm gonna say and see you soon bye